What's up mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today's video is going to be a deep dive into the pheno hunting project of 2022. So you can see the whole playlist. It's called the Immaculate Inoculation. But a quick recap is that back on Christmas Eve, I inoculated a bunch of different spores. We did a few oyster um, varieties, Namico, chestnut mushrooms and a couple more and after they grew out on petri dishes we selected different cultures grew them out onto their own separate petri dishes introduced those into grain spawn so all these videos are available on our playlist immaculate inoculation and after we selected for the fastest most viable strains on agar we cross the single haploid isolates with each other to produce diploid mated pairings and then we put those onto grain spawn so that we can move them into bulk substrate and this video kind of takes over from there and follows it through our whole process in how we select the best mushrooms for our uh, uh, farm operation here in Denver. It's also a super exciting day because we are debuting the Mach 3 Brown Oyster Slants. So this is the first limited edition slant that we've ever produced and it's the result of our breeding project. So this oyster shaved off two days in our production compared to any other oyster mushroom that we grow. So we decided to call it Mach 3 because it's so fast. Um, these are available for a very limited time on Etsy. There's 75 slants that you see behind me and they are all progenators from that original spore culture. So these are the OG slants and they will be released on a limited basis. Eventually I'll get some liquid cultures going but for now I wanted to release the original genetics from this breeding project. So go check out our Etsy Fresh Fungi after you watch this video and I'll go ahead and play the rest of the video for you guys and if you have any questions comment in the in the section below. I'll be posting links throughout the video. I hope you guys enjoy this breeding project. I know that we're super excited. This is the first day of our full production. It's April 12th and this whole process started December 24th. So almost four months of selection, really careful procedures, and you can see all of that in our playlist, uh, Immaculate Inoculation. Okay guys, I'll flip this through and chop together this video for you. There's some bonus footage at the end if you wanna hang in there. You'll get to see some of the other results from our project. <laughs> so it was really fun. I hope you guys enjoy this video and hang in there until the very end and check out our Etsy shop if you want to get some of these slants before they go pretty quickly. All right, what's up everyone? So our second batch of the breeding project is ready. We have about 20 different crosses of the summer oyster and you can see that these are all colonized and we just sterilized the master's mix blocks so these are 50-50 soy hull and oak pellets. And then I'm going to inoculate with one bag per jar. And that way each bag will be a different phenotype. And once these colonize, we'll move everything into fruiting.
Alright guys, these are all inoculated. I'm going to head off to Florida for a week, um, get my final breath in before the farmer's market, and then hopefully these will be colonized when I get back, and we'll throw them into fruiting. What's up everyone? Um, I just got back from Florida, and I'm super excited because it looks like 90% um, of these summer oyster crosses are already colonized. So that is record time for any of our oyster mushrooms going into bulk substrate. So I'm going to move these right into our first fruiting tent of the season. And then I'm also going to move about 38 phenotypes from our first batch that went into the refrigerator. And then all of these will get to fruit out in the same environment probably over the next two or three weeks, I'll be posting the results and cutting through the extra content to try to make a really precise video. And then my plan is to release a limited amount of slants. So we've got a bunch of blank slants already prepped for the winner or the best mushroom phenotype of this whole breeding project. So I'm super excited. It looks like there's probably about eight to 12 really strong oyster mushrooms coming out of this already. Golden oyster, the Colorado oyster, and the brown oyster look like the strongest, but I also did some Namico that hopefully will be a much more robust yielder. And then I've got some different types of enoki coming down the pipeline. I don't know if I'm gonna get to those before the market season. However, I just wanted to share the updates after I got back from my vacation. Now I'm going into hyperdrive mode. So we've got our last in-person class scheduled on mushroomcult.net. Check out Zach's website. I'm not sure if he's gonna be doing some solo classes this summer, but we really have our, our cultivation seminar kind of dialed in. So I'm looking forward to the last one of the season. There's still some seats open. And I've got some other news that I'll be posting a little bit closer to market season. But yeah, definitely stay tuned for these limited slant drops. I'll be posting those as soon as they grow out and pass QC. Got some fresh LCs on deck and I'm, I'm trying to stay up with the demand. And it's been getting crazy busy probably because of the spring fever of everyone is getting into gardening mode so i totally understand that i know my lion's mane has been sold out for about 10 days but i've got about two liters on deck and i'm just waiting on qc all right guys i'm gonna go ahead and uh film myself loading these into the fruiting room and then i'll slice them open and then the race really um, the, then the race is really on. Right, everyone, I've got my humidifier going full blast behind me, so I'm just waiting for the humidity to get up to around the, the upper 90s. It could take about 45 minutes or so. Right now, we're uh, hitting 56.6, and that was after, you know, three minutes of completely dried out fruiting room. So, once that humidity gets up, I'll start moving my blocks into our first fruiting room of the season. So I've got the batch of all the different summer oysters that were crossed, and they're mostly completely colonized. And I wanted to just kind of go through a new technique that I'm going to be using. I was inspired by a video with Moss, Mossy Creek Mushrooms about increasing the uh, pin sets and I looked into it and I kind of correlated the uh, surface area of the cut with the amount of pins that are going to form so I'm gonna try out some W cuts with this batch it's not something I normally do but just looking at all the letters in the um, alphabet W seems to have the most surface area if you think about the inside of a cell mitochondria are kind of compact with these curves so maybe an M or a W would provide the most surface area so the downside could be that it might be causing them to dry out too quickly but that's why I'm raising the humidity in the grow room to close to hundred percent so what I like to do is go through and slice the corner of the bag to squeeze out the air 
and then I use rubber bands to kind of seal that plastic on there and then after that I'll cut my W's and put them onto the shelf. So I'll just uh, set up this camera and kind of go through these bags in a time lapse so you can see how I'm moving them into the fruiting room and then I'll go ahead and update you guys once they start to pin. So for all of the top fruiting mushrooms, I do a little bit of a different technique. Um, so this is a Namco, and in order to prevent the side pinning, I'll take a rubber band, place it around here, and then I just do three or four little cuts at the top, and that way it will allow evaporation to take effect. And then. These ones I usually place on the bottom shelf just because the CO2 is naturally going to concentrate at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and move all these into the fruiting room as well. So all of these are loaded in. Right behind me, we've got 38 different phenotypes of oyster mushrooms. Um, we've got local Colorado oyster, golden oyster, uh, and brown oyster. And then we've got Namico and chestnut as well down on these bottom shelves. So I'll keep you guys posted um, once they start pinning. And I'm gonna use this other shelf for my green experiment and some other enoki mushrooms that I'm messing around with so there'll be a full room in here to test the tolerance of CO2 it feels like the humidity is getting um, pretty close to to where I want it and I'll dial that slowly back throughout the course of the mushrooms life cycle what's up everyone it's been five days since we moved these blocks into fruiting and we've got our first phenotypes pinning so there are three different brown oysters that started pinning after five days. We've got this one here. And then I'm super excited about this phenotype. So three out of 38 pinning in five days. It's been a little bit colder than I normally run the tent, but you can see our humidity is holding steady at about 92 and it's just going to be a matter of days before the rest of these phenotypes um, start showing some pins. So it's been six days in fruiting and we've got our first three phenotypes. You can see that the brown oysters are definitely ahead of the curve. Um, you can see the rest of our mushrooms here are still kind of just waiting to pin, but this is very exciting. It shaved off about two days for our brown oysters. Okay guys, so number four for pinning after eight days, so that's still about a day ahead of schedule. We've got this first of the wild crossbred oyster, and it is summer oyster five and nine so hopefully uh, we have some more crosses with fives and nines and i'll take a look down the line here so 
So these are all the golden oysters. Three and eight. Two and four. Two and eight. One and eight. Three and eight. So that looks like the only compatible pairing. All right guys, I'll keep you posted. This M3 brown oyster is looking fantastic. All right guys, eight days in and we've got our first phenotype that looks like it's almost ready for harvest. So I like to keep an eye on the caps and as soon as they furl, that's when the spores begin to drop. So you want to make sure you harvest your mushrooms like right at this stage where they're kind of furled under and nice and firm. And you can see the beautiful structure on this mushroom. I think I'm going to dub it Mach 3 because it's so fast. Um, this was under a week pinning and then four days until harvest. And right now we're rocking 92, 92% humidity. So it's holding up really well, even though the other ones are still starting to pin. And then you can see we've got two more phenotypes. This one's okay. I don't really like the structure as much as this beautiful Mach 3 brown oyster, but it's still, you know, proof of concept. And then we've got this weird looking blob up there that um, I'll probably pass on this guy, but we're just waiting for the rest of the phenotypes to develop and I'll go ahead and get this slant out as soon as possible. structure it's got that beautiful color and it's before the caps kind of unfurled which would indicate that it's dropping spores so I'm gonna pick this off the block and get a weight on it um, all right all right so I like to just grab it by the base here and look at that And you can see on the block here that it's already got that second flush on the way. So this thing is just dying to pin. All right, let's, uh, let's tear this out. So just under one pound on the first flush with the second flush right on the way. All right, everyone. So it's day 10 in fruiting with our breeding project. And I picked the Mach 3 brown oyster yesterday and I let the M1 grow out a little bit better. It seems, you know, a little bit higher yields. It's not as firm as the Mach 3, but it is producing some nice some nice fruits so I'm gonna keep this strain this is the uh, brown oyster blob so out of 38 phenotypes we ended up with two really fast brown oysters one of them is kind of fast and kind of like a, a mutation and then out of all the wild Colorado we do have one that is pinning and growing pretty rapidly it's going to be five and six. So I can go back to the haploids, use those and try to cross with some of the other fast breeding varieties and maybe we'll end up with a cool phenotype that way. But this is kind of the end of the road for my standard of breeding. After 10 or 12 days, all of my commercial strains will outperform 
most of these offspring. So I just wanted to give you guys a perspective on the complete process for breeding mushrooms from spore. So out of probably 45 different plates to start with, maybe 10% got contaminated. So that's some loss. And then out of the 38 that made it all the way to fruiting, which were selected for by speed of growth, just uh, rigor in general, and the health of the mycelium. And I guess it was, it was selected for against contamination too because the weakest ones dropped off right away. So out of those 38, we've got really two, two solid oyster strains, one mutation, a uh, pretty good Colorado oyster. Um, I'm super excited for this to fruit out. It's going a little slower than expected, but it did come from a warm weather variety, which could be contributing, as well as all these um, golden oysters and the Namico, which they typically take about two weeks anyway. However, moving forward, if you guys are going to re repeat this process, just keep in mind it's a numbers game. Out of 38, I probably got two or three successful fruits and one pretty good fruit. So 10% out of all the work that I put in moved the needle slightly. So I gained two days on production cycle from this breeding project, which is substantial in the long term. I will be posting the slant culture of the Mach 3 and I'll probably keep M1 as a backup because I kind of like how fast it grows and it's got some really nice yield, not as good quality as the M3 as far as structure and firmness, but it is a really good mushroom. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video series. I'm gonna stitch this all together and release it pretty soon. If any other mushrooms that are pretty cool come along out of this grow cycle, I'll definitely post post the videos, but from here forward, I'm just gonna focus on the ones that were actual improvements on my current commercial varieties. So that's pretty common. I do have some surprise lion's mane that I thought were long dead. They're pretty old spawn, but I'm probably gonna eat them myself because I'm so surprised that how well those did. <laughs> Even after being in spawn for about four months in the fridge okay guys give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video series um, check out the beginning immaculate inoculation if you haven't checked out our youtube shop yet we've just went online with some merch in our youtube store so i hope you guys like that leave some comments with suggestions we're also dropping a book this monday so i'm pretty excited for that it's my first book and I'm going to do it as an ebook so that there's a bunch of affiliate links throughout the book that you can click on to get the exact products that we use for our setup. It's really convenient and I'm going to be releasing that on Etsy as well. So stay tuned. I've got a pretty busy weekend coming up with mushroom classes. There's one more class this April and then this whole room is going to get filled up with mushrooms probably in the next four to six weeks. So it was a long project. I hope you guys enjoyed that really detailed journey. I'm gonna do my best to trim it up and make it as precise as possible. But I did wanna show the whole process in case anyone else is interested in breeding mushrooms and just developing their strains because I think over time, the whole industry is going to be elevated if everyone can produce high yielding oyster strains like this and cut down on that grow cycle it's going to benefit everyone so i hope you guys enjoyed that video series and until next time much love What's up everyone? It's a very exciting day. So I've got a little bit less than a hundred slants ready to go. And I went back into my cold storage and grabbed 
the OG slant from the immaculate inoculation of the Brown Oyster M3 or now dubbed Mach 3 Brown Oyster. So I was going to do a hundred, but a couple of them I lost and traded and um, I think I'm going to be, be doing 80 slants that are a one-time release of the Brown Oyster Mach 3. So as soon as this video goes up, these will be out, out on Etsy. I'm going to do a little handwritten annotation of the Mach Oyster slant culture. Now these are on potato dextrose with a blue dye and I remember how many drops of each that I put in here so kind of a self validation tool to trace back the original G1 cultures of the Mach 3. So the advantage of having the original culture is that it's not senesced so as long as you maintain the health of the slant then you should be able to have this culture for years and years make your own liquid cultures I will be releasing liquid cultures um, as soon as I grow those out but that's gonna be another video until then I'm going to have a very limited supply of the G1 brown oysters available on Etsy alright guys I hope you enjoyed that breeding project it's about to kick off into mushroom season 2022 so I'll be posting updates on our pro and the, the transition to the new warehouse over the summer it's gonna be a very busy year for us but I appreciate everyone watching um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet give us a thumbs up comment below if you have any suggestions for future videos or if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these stay tuned we've got some really fun projects coming up and until next time much love everyone it's uh, 14 days into fruiting and we've got some late comers to the party but I just wanted to show you guys kind of the differences that I'm seeing between pin sets and just different characteristics of the mushrooms so this one here is a summer oyster cross and you can notice the structure 
it's got a really nice cap to stem ratio so I'm kind of pleased with that one it's just a little slow um, to my liking and then we've got this beautiful white tan colored oyster um, it's a little bit lower yield but I really like the shape and the stem to cap ratio on that one as well and if we come down the line our first golden oyster is pinning 14 days in and you can see this bright yellow pin set so I'm super stoked to see the coloration on this one and if I come down the line we've got our summer oyster M2 mated pairing and you can see this one really nice pin set but a little bit laggy compared to the other two and then at the very end here we've got another golden oyster that's pinning 14 days in and last and not last but not least it is another brown oyster m4 that's just pinning one single pin so this is starting to reveal all the variants between all of these different phenotypes and just a little bit of the variety that you can expect if you do your own breeding project so this one looking really cool up here probably gonna cook that up today what's up everyone it's 19 days in and I wanted to go through some different phenotypes so this one is the summer oyster 3 5 it's got that really nice stem to cap ratio really firm fruiting bodies kind of dry so it's a good mushroom it's just not yielding that great but it is the same as that one right above it the progenitor the uh, number five single spore isolate might be a winner so I'll go back and cross that one we've got the multi spore that's kind of just starting out 19 days in and then we've got a few different golden oysters so look at the differences this one has this really nice big it's kind of almost gray pin set and then we've got M7 which is like this bright yellow pin set at first and it's fading into this gray blob almost and then coming down the line we've got our M3 second flushing at 19 days so that's super impressive summer oyster M2 beautiful white frosty Colorado oyster this is kind of what I was hoping for one of them um, would put out so once again that's a M2 so different than the five and then we've got our M4 golden oyster already showing some tiny little caps and then we can go back up to our brown oyster number 10 that weird blob and the second flush actually came in pretty spectacular so that's kind of uh, impressive how much it could change from first flush to second flush I might revisit this one because that is a pretty big second flush so that's the brown oyster M10 so we've got M3 um, and then M1 and M10 it's the Mach 3 second flush at 19 days and then we've got this beautiful summer oyster M2 coming in nice and white all right everyone so 21 days in and we've already got our second flush on the Mach 3 so I wanted to get a weight on this because it's pretty remarkable to get a first flush so quickly but to also get that second flush is very impressive um, and you can see the rest of these phenotypes are still growing out but I wanted to focus on the Mach 3 because that one was the winner by far and let's go check out how much we get off of one block in 21 days all right so let's turn on the scale see if we can get a good view on that and basically I'm just gonna harvest these like I would normally and 
and 9.5 ounces. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this series on the immaculate inoculation and pheno hunting. We definitely found our winner at one pound 11 ish ounces at 21 days off one block. So, Mach 3, it's on slants right now. I'm just doing my final quality control and then I'll have those up on Etsy. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. I've got a lot of exciting experiments coming up and I'm super pumped about the new build out and we've got an amazing oyster mushroom that I'm going to be running all summer long at the farmer's markets. So if you wanna come stop by, we'll be at Cherry Creek every Saturday from 9 to 2 this summer and it starts May 7th or the first weekend in May all the way until Halloween. We'll be there every Saturday. I hope to see you guys and um, until next time, much love.